We have another study finding that microplastics are linked with increased risk of cardiovascular disease. Let's dive into these details. I think this is so important because as you know, the medical community is monomaniacally focused on lowering your LDL cholesterol. But what about the microplastics? We now have, this year alone, we've talked at least on this channel, the study that was published in the New, New England Journal of Medicine in March of this year, finding that microplastics was linked or was actually found detected in the carotid artery plaque and was correlated with increase a 4.5 fold increased risk of having a heart attack or a stroke. Okay, so the more microplastic that's in your body, it is directly proportional to the severity of having a major adverse cardiovascular event, which is not, what you, you want to avoid a major adverse cardiovascular event, by the way. Yet we have this new study and th this followed 108 people over the course of several years. Investigators in China published the study titled Microplastics are Associated with Elevated Atherosclerotic Risk and Increased Vascular Complexity in Acute Coronary Syndrome Patients. So let's just pause here and slow down. There was a lot of multisyllabic words in that study title. Okay, so what is acute coronary syndrome patients? These are patients that present to the hospital with heart attack-like symptoms, such as chest pain, such as shortness of breath, and they are frequently uh, put on diagnostic machines like an EKG to figure out what's going on. Is there enzymes being released from the heart? Uh, individuals might get some blood work to see if there was a myocardial infarction or heart attack. And so the investigators had this really interesting study design. As you can see from this graphical abstract on the video portion of this podcast, if you're on iTunes or Spotify, just click the link below and you'll, you'll get this image here. So these individuals underwent angiography, and then they also had some blood tests looking at mass spectroscopy, looking at the detection uh, or trying to ascertain and enumerate the presence of microplastic. And they had a control group and they also had an intervention group where people, not an intervention group, they had an arm of the study who was experiencing significant symptoms related to poor cardiovascular function or heart attack. And they found significant correlations between blood levels of microplastics of all kinds, phthalates, polyethylene, and various different mi microplastic species. And the concentration in the blood of microplastics directly correlated with the severity of the acute coronary syndrome and the symptoms related to a heart attack. Now, here's where it's hard to suss out the direction of causality. Could it be that the individuals having a heart attack are having significant occlusion or narrowing of the vessels and that is causing the liberation of the microplastics? That's one theory. But the other theory is that these microplastics are directly causing and are linked with immunologic shifts that increase the susceptibility to develop plaques in the first place that will over time cause a heart attack or a stroke or a blood clot. Okay, so that's the more... Uh, the more pragmatic way to sort of think about this. And the investigators, I'll share with you what they wrote. But as you can see here from figure five, there's a direct correlation between blood levels of microplastics and risk of coronary artery disease, as well as the acute coronary syndrome. So uh, we're going to talk a little bit more about this. I think this is really interesting to keep in mind because as I mentioned, you know, the, the medical community is still very, very focused on having you cut out butter, red meat, and minimizing saturated fat consumption and lowering your LDL cholesterol. Um, when was the last time you heard a mainstream medical doctor say, you know, you need to stop drinking out of plastic bottles? I don't know. I, I haven't been in the doctor in years because I run my own labs and most of my friends are doctors anyway. So I get advice from them. But, um, uh, our doctor, I don't know, let me know in the comments, are our healthcare practitioners talking about this yet? If not, they should, because we have recently reported a study finding that microplastic accumulation was significantly correlated with erectile dysfunction and was found in the penile tissue. We didn't talk about this study, but in April of this year, there was a, an analysis finding that microplastics are detected in the human male testicles. We now see this in the placenta. So it's in the coronary arteries, it's in the carotid arteries, it's in the penis, it's in the testicles, it's in the placenta. These things are everywhere. So you might be saying, what do I do about this? Well, the number one thing, I think the number one source of exposure, I should say more accurately, is from plastic water, okay? There was, I believe it was UCLA or Mount Sinai, or Cedar Sinai, sorry, looked at the amount of microplastic found in pla commonly over the count, you know, just store-bought plastic water. And we're talking about millions of particles per liter. So if you're drinking out of plastic water bottles, just don't, just don't do it. The second source that I think is really important to minimize is coffee cups. And I'll share with you in a moment why that might be. And I think we should all bring our stainless steel tumbler to coffee 
places. I'm not saying don't, don't ever go out and get coffee. I do that all the time. I get a matcha tea or an espresso or whatever, but I ask for the Fahir mug and a stainless steel tumbler. So we're going to dive into that shortly. But friends, thank you for being here. If you're enjoying the content, hit that like button. Let me know what you think in the comments section. Now, since we're talking about plastics, I think one way to help to excrete these plastics is by supporting glutathione. This is your body's most important intracellular antioxidant, as well as detoxification molecule. It's been shown to help neutralize some of the problems that have been linked or ascribed to microplastic exposure, because it turns out, as we will talk about, microplastic affects your immune system, which could increase the risk of having all these other complications that we've been discussing. So if, especially if, as you get into your 40s and 50s and beyond, you want to support glutathione levels because glutathione levels inversely correlate with age. The older you are, the lower your levels are going to be. And scientists at Baylor have recently found that pairing NAC as well as the amino acid glycine together helps support multiple aspects of aging as well as um, supporting healthy glutathione levels. So I wanted to let you know about the novel NAC Glycine Supreme by Myoscience that not only features 1,600 milligrams of NAC, which is a very hefty dose, along with 1,600 milligrams of glycine, but also taurine together in an easy to drink powder drink that you can drink in the evening. Because glycine also, in addition to providing one of the three essential amino acids to make glutathione, it helps support sleep. Glycine is really important for sleep as well. So you can take it in the evening, it will help your sleep, and research shows that it also may help support healthy aging. You can save by going to myoscience.com and use the code podcast at checkout. I will put links in the description below. So getting back to disposable coffee cups, you might be saying, well, gosh, these are cardboard, they're paper. Like how hard harmful could they really be? Well, you might notice that inside of many to-go food packaging, even at Whole Foods, I mean, Whole Foods is not not complicit here. I mean, they are part of the problem and I, I, it's hard, right? You make a, a product that people are uh, consuming food out of. You don't want the food to stick to it. Like if you just ate out of a cardboard box, right? And you had like a rice and potatoes and some meat, it would start to embed into the cardboard. And so these food packaging companies, they line the uh, cardboard material with polyethylene, with micro with plastic. And so you add hot elements to that, like coffee or tea, and guess where that's going? That's going into your coffee or tea or your food. And so it turns out that food packaging as well as drink packaging is a significant source of exposure to these microplastics that, are, as we now know, are not benign. Increased blood levels of these microplastics are linked with heart attack-like symptoms. They are linked with carotid artery plaque. And all you need is a little piece of carotid artery plaque to break off, and then you can get a stroke. This is serious stuff. And so you need to be kind of a nerd. When you go to the coffee shop or you're going out with your friends, tell the barista, hey, can you put that in a for here, a ceramic mug? Most, co I've never actually had kickback. I mean, there are small, sometimes a very small coffee shop that doesn't even have for here mugs, but most do. And they like to uh, sometimes sell you their mugs. They'll brand their mugs and put their logo on it and all that. So, um, and sometimes I buy those. It's kind of fun. So you got to be a little bit nerdy about this stuff because you don't want to have erectile dysfunction. You don't want this stuff to get into your genitals, your organs. You should, certainly do not want it to get into your coronary or carotid arteries. Like I said, all you need is a little piece to break off and you, you're going to have to spend a significant amount of time in the hospital. You, you want to avoid that. So I think the data really shows that as we get older, our arteries stiffen and we lose elasticity. And a major working theory has been that it's the cholesterol and the saturated fat and the butter and the tallow that is causing all this uh, atherosclerosis. But an, another more plausible theory, because if you look at the incidence and the rates of all these vascular complications that have been occurring, they temporarily coincide with the introduction of microplastics. And we're now seeing younger and younger people having strokes, having heart attacks. I mean, how many videos have you seen in the last year where an individual is playing soccer or basketball and they grab their chest and they fall over? I mean, we're seeing a lot of that. So there are multiple causes here, but I we can't rule out the possibility that microplastic exposure is actually driving this whole phenomenon of atherosclerosis that is leading to premature cardiovascular disease and cerebrovascular disease like strokes uh, and mortality from that. Uh, and so I think really good uh, information here. And what I think is important, I want to finish off here. Uh, this is table four. And the investigators are looking at various interleukins and cytokines. And it turned out the levels of microplastic correlate on par 
uh, with blood levels of various interleukins that are pro-inflammatory, particularly interleukin-6, which we know to be one of the prototypical pro-inflammatory cytokines. And so that correlated uh, linearly with blood microplastic levels, as well as other cytokines like interferon uh, and beyond. Now, cytokines do vary based upon you know, the time of day that they're drawn and so forth, but I think it makes sense logically to think that you know these microplastics are not only hardening our arteries, which is problematic in and of itself, but they're driving inflammatory pathways in the body. I mean, how many people do you know that have allergies, that have skin issues, that have weird autoimmune conditions? And we blame the environment and people just say, oh, it's the environment's changing, but let's be a little bit more specific. I mean, could it be the microbiome? Sure, but probably these microplastics are immunogenic. And that's why I mentioned, I think NAC, especially if you've had a historical increased body burden or exposure to plastic water bottles and things like that, uh, make a lot of sense. Going in the sauna, sweating, detoxifying by way of uh, improving your body temperature. The sweat, we've talked before about the blood urine sweat study from Stefan Jenis over in Alberta, Canada. He's found when putting people in saunas or doing hot yoga that uh, persistent organic pollutants like microplastics as well as heavy metals actually are found and detected in the sweat. And so I know uh, sauna has been relegated as a luxury. It's, uh, and I understand you need some resources to access a sauna. Other countries like Finland and Norway and parts of uh, Eastern Europe, saunas are everywhere. And so I think we should all, uh, we should be subsidizing sauna instead of subsidizing Doritos and Cheetos. Like, wh why aren't we doing that? That does, it makes no sense, you know, where our government is allocating uh, taxpayer dollars to, to, and speaking of Doritos and Cheetos, the lining of Doritos and Cheetos and all the fast food and processed food, you're getting significant microplastic exposure from that. So, I think the benefits here is when you eat a whole healthy real food diet where you're making majority of your meals at home from scratch uh, and you're being more mindful when you go out and enjoy coffee or alcohol or whatever with friends that you're uh, requesting these things are um, you know delivered in ceramic or stainless steel uh, mugs and cups and, and things of the sort and just being mindful bringing your water with you you know when you go out and you're going to go shopping with your friends or spend the day with your partner or your kids just fill up your stainless steel water bottle before you leave home so you don't have to have an impact pulse at three o'clock you haven't had water all day so you succumb to the plastic bottle at the fair whatever just plan a little bit of planning ahead can significantly reduce your exposure to these microplastics and we now have pretty good data that they're harmful in a, in a serious way having a heart attack or a stroke i mean that's serious stuff here and and the data is pretty clear that these plastics are hardening our arteries and and are linked with inflammatory pathways so it's time to be a little bit more intentional about this, guys. I, I can't tell you how many times I go to a health conference and there's plastic water bottles on the, on the, you know, in the display table. It's like, what are we doing? We all have to be a little bit more serious about this and share this message with friends or family because I think people think, oh, it's just a little water. Like, what's the harm in this? Well, a little water, uh, you know, 16 ounces. I mean, that's, we're talking about hundreds, hundreds of thousands if not millions of pieces of microplastic. And so you add that up to one little bottle of water every day over the course of a lifetime, pretty soon you might have significant atherosclerosis as a consequence of that. So we have pretty good data. Please share this message. Plastic is not safe, especially, I will say, for children. So make sure that your kids are not cooking in plastic or and, and all the fast food. I think part of the reason why fast food and convenience food is so unhealthy and the people that consume it look so unhealthy is because not just that this food is manufactured in a lab somewhere, it's the packaging. I think the pa packaging is a significant source of exposure to these compounds. So again, you wanna minimize your intake and exposure and enhance your excretion. Part of that is exercise. This is why exercise is so health promoting. Just going for a run and getting hot, you're sweating. You're sweating this stuff out, which is great. You can go in for a run, sweat, and then hop in the sauna for a couple minutes or get a sauna blanket. There's a lot of things that you can do. So as always, I'm grateful that you tuned all the way in. Hopefully you find these videos helpful. If you did, hit that like button. Be sure to subscribe and let me know what you think of this video in the comment section below. We'll catch you in a future one down the road.